Hey, this is Blonde Guy Gamer, and I'm back for a special Halloween-themed They Made a Sequel. For this occasion, I felt it would be appropriate to cover the sequel to the 16-bit cult classic, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. And yeah, you may be wondering why this is blue when normally it's just a regular gray Super Nintendo cartridge. Well, for whatever reason, the previous owner painted this blue and did not a bad job, all things considering. So much so that at the time of picking this up, I thought all Zombies Ate My Neighbors cartridges were blue, kind of like how Doom and Killer Instinct cartridges were red and black, respectively. But upon closer inspection, I did see this was a custom paint job, and a mysterious one at that. At the very least, this does make my copy unique in that sense. Is this like getting a shiny Pokemon in Super Nintendo cartridge form? Regardless, this still works just fine, so before we get to the sequel, let's quickly see what this game is even all about. Released in 1993, Zombies Ate My Neighbors is a LucasArts-developed, Konami-published game in which you play as Zeke and or Julie going around several levels rescuing their neighbors, not just from zombies, but all sorts of horror movie-style monsters that relentlessly go after you as well. Fortunately, you have plenty of resources to fend them off, from water guns filled with holy water out of the Lost Boys to all sorts of other weapons and items you'll pick up. However, being Zombies Ate My Neighbors is no easy task. There are 48 levels, 55 if you include bonus stages, to go through, and you start off with 10 people to save, but the more that are killed, the less there will be to collect on the following stages, and if you lose all your neighbors or lives, it's game over. You do get easy to remember passwords every 4 levels, but they only keep track of how many neighbors are left, meaning you'll always start with just 3 lives, a water gun, and a single med kit. So it's actually better to do the whole game in one run unless you want to attempt to start from scratch on later stages. Now while this game may seem unforgiving at first, learning where everything is, some careful item usage, and having a little bit of luck can get you to the end. Although that probably won't stop people from calling this a Dark Souls of 16-bit games. Besides Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Can we stop making that comparison with every game that's remotely challenging? Even as a joke that's getting tiring. Initial difficulty aside, Zombies Ate My Neighbors is still fun in that hectic kind of way, with a lot of clutch moments you can pull off. It can be stressful, especially if you're down to like two victims per stage near the end of the game and you scramble to save them, but it gives you quite a rush. Add the delightfully cheesy aesthetic of B-movie horror-themed monsters and locations all thrown in, catchy fitting music, being able to do two players, even if that makes things arguably more challenging with having to coordinate everything, and you can see why this game earns its cult classic status. Too bad that wasn't enough to be included in the SNES Classic. So after such a zany game like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, what was to follow after that? Ghoul Patrol. I don't have a physical copy of this game, because it's rare and stupid expensive to try and get nowadays, so I got on the Wii Virtual Console. In fact, I also got Zombies Ate My Neighbors on the Virtual Console just so I can record consistent footage between the two. And another reason why I got them on the Virtual Console is because the Wii Shop Channel is going to be shut down, give me an incentive to do a video of Ghoul Patrol before that happens, and you don't care and just want me to get to the game already, right? Right. Let's get this sequel going. Okay, there's no way I'm going to do the whole thing with these over my eyes. I don't know how Zeke does it. On the following year after Zombies Ate My Neighbors, Ghoul Patrol came out for the Super Nintendo, with the planned Sega Genesis version getting cancelled. Oh yeah, I should mention that Zombies Ate My Neighbors did have a Genesis release too, although the Super Nintendo is usually regarded as the better version overall and was released on the Virtual Console for that system. So having the sequel just on the Super Nintendo is fine since most people played and prefer Zombies Ate My Neighbors on there anyway. JVC published Ghoul Patrol instead of Konami, but was still developed by LucasArts. Technically. It was actually made by an undisclosed third party that licensed the Zombies Ate My Neighbors game engine, which was also used for later LucasArts SNES games Metal Warriors and Big Sky Trooper. Plus, School Patrol wasn't even a sequel at first. It was reworked into one in an attempt to boost sales. Judging from the few people that actually got the game back then, I'd say that didn't really work. And calling it as something as unassuming as Ghoul Patrol likely didn't help either. It's like Skull Monkeys all over again. If they wanted to properly market this as a sequel, couldn't they have just gone with something like Zombies Ate My Neighbors... Again? That would have at least made it more clear it was a sequel. Then again, the name of Ghoul Patrol does make a bit more sense within the game's story. Which is something that is new right away, as Zombies Ate My Neighbors didn't really have a story. Not that it needed one. And neither does this game, to be frank, as it's pretty dumb. The opening starts off with Zeke and Julie going to a Ghosts and Demons exhibit at a library, coming across a magical book flowing out of a chest that Zeke, who talks like every wannabe cool dude in the 90s, thinks that it's just a special effect as part of the exhibit. You literally fought werewolves and vampires in the last game. You should know what's supernatural and what isn't. Reading the opening passage of the book, the two discover a phrase that needs to be said out loud in reverse so that ghosts and demons can come out and play with them. 
this is enough for Zeke to think that it's cool, and Julie just rolls with it. After clearly not seeing Evil Dead to know why this isn't a good idea, they say the line and release this... demon guy, who wants to conquer all the time dimensions. Because only taking over the world in this timeline is too simple, I guess. What have we done? We are doomed. No way, man! I'm gonna fight this ugly demon dude and send him back to his freaky dimension! You two might as well go ahead and do that after summoning a demon and his minions. A simple mistake to fix, I'm sure. Yeah, I told you this story was dumb. I have a hard time believing the same characters that dealt with countless horrors and zombies ate my neighbors would end up doing something like this. Though the main characters are the only real connection between the two games, so it's obvious the inclusion of Zeke and Julie were part of the alterations to make Ghoul Patrol a sequel, albeit a loosely tied one. The effort to have a story is not a bad idea, just that it's kind of pointless here. I won't blame you if you just skip the intro and jump right into the game. Ghoul Patrol plays mostly the same as Zombies Ate My Neighbors did, where you go through as either or both characters, rescuing victims in every level from all sorts of ghouls before going on to the next. Except a few changes have been made, and not all for the better, unfortunately. For starters, movement has weight and momentum now, making the characters more slippery. Already that's a puzzling change, as Zombies Ate My Neighbors was fine with its precise controls. Also, walking with just the D-pad is considerably slower, but by holding Y, you start running. And you can go even faster if you run for long enough stretches, which which then you'll likely run into enemies and things before you can react in time. Not only that, it takes a second to kick in and tapping Y is firing your weapon, so you can't auto-fire because of the run function. Other new actions include the slide with the X button, that only serves as a method to quickly get away from something, and jumping with B, which means there's platforming now, and... it's not great. At first it seems fine and simple, having you jump onto desks or over a ledge to get the things, but then it starts demanding that you run and jump across gaps, which is still okay enough for some instances, until you get to where you need to get across precarious platforms over death pits you can easily slip and fall into with the floaty controls, instantly losing lives. And those aren't the only places you can fall down either. Falling off a window ledge? Sure, but open graves? That's just cheap. Cheap is also what I would describe the enemies at times, as they can swarm and drain your life pretty quickly. Zombies Ate My Neighbors did have enemies that spawn infinitely, forcing you to keep moving, but in Ghoul Patrol the spawn rate for some foes are ridiculous, meaning you really have to keep moving or else you'll quickly get overrun. It also doesn't help that the enemy hitboxes can seem a little funky at times. Hit detection in Zombies Ate My Neighbors could be a little picky, yet with Ghoul Patrol, foes still hitting you while in their death or spine animations isn't very fair. You do have a few weapons to fend off ghouls before that happens. The default crossbow, while having unlimited arrows, is naturally the weakest, with others you find and pick up ammo for. There's a machine gun, a laser, a homing shot, and a mortar launcher that shoots in an awkward short arc making it practically useless against most regular enemies. Those are all you get in terms of firearms by the way, making it very lackluster compared to the wise shortman zombies that my neighbors had, all of which having uses against one thing or another and I liked the improvised nature of them. In Ghoul Patrol, they're so few and unimaginative, only serving to deal with enemies more quickly and easily. Granted, with the amount of weapons and items in Zombies Ate My Neighbors, one of the main issues was that you can only cycle through either of them one way, meaning you can often overshoot something you need in particular and have to cycle through everything again. Ghoul Patrol does try to address that with being able to use the L and R buttons to scroll through items, though not exactly back and forth as going back seems to go back to the first item, it's kind of weird like that. And you press select in order to use an item, which is also a bit cumbersome at first. Even then, there's not as many items, and changing weapons is still with one button. It is simpler and easier to have whatever item and weapon you want, but only because they are downplayed from the design mentality of Zombies Ate My Neighbors. And the items themselves in Ghoul Patrol are no exception either. Some are recurring from the last game, like medkits that fully heal you or the red potions that transform you into an invincible monster for a short time. Except here you become a Grim Reaper, which is pretty sweet and you can even still save people ironically. That is until you realize you can't jump as a Reaper, so if you need to hop over something, you just have to wait till it wears off. Seriously, you can't just float a few inches higher? You'd think Grim Reapers would be way more capable than that. Well, how many Grim Reapers have you met before, mate? Yeah, that's a good point and well made. I guess it's meant to be a trade-off, much like how the monster form in Zombies Ate My Neighbors couldn't swim, even giving you a little funny NO animation if you tried to. But you need to jump more often in Ghoul Patrol, so it's more of a hindrance here. Blue potions that turn you into an invulnerable ghost form also make a comeback, but now you can destroy enemies on contact and still use your guns. The random potions are back too, which as the name suggests, gives you a random effect, but with less results this time around, so taking a chance with them is actually more likely to be beneficial than negative. Then there's a couple items that make me question their inclusion. First off, there's the gold potion that also fully heals you, making them redundant when you already have medkits that do the exact same thing. 
at least those are still useful, unlike the green potions where its only purpose is to take half your health away if you drink one. Why would you ever have an item like this in a game? The only time you would ever use a green potion is when you first find one, try it, discover it hurts you, and then never use it again. And yet it's still an item you can keep collecting that will just sit in your inventory, wondering why it was even included at all in this game. The rest of the collectibles are thankfully pretty standard, such as one-ups that you can find much more often in this game as extra lives were pretty uncommon in Zombies Ate My Neighbors, probably to try and compensate for losing lives or the bad platforming sections. Then there's these cooked chickens that partially recover health. Psst, uh, what is it? What? Are you serious? <laughs> okay, according to the operations guide, those are supposed to be croissants. Tell me, do these look like croissants? Because they look way more like chickens to me. Whatever they are, they also appear way more frequently than the four or five burgers you can get in the previous game, because you'll likely need them too. Which is something I can't say for the money bags as they're just extra points to contribute to an arbitrary high score. Zombies in many years at least had it so you can get a victim back every 40,000 points, or even extra life if you manage to keep all ten instead, and you can earn point bonuses to contribute to that by doing certain tasks. But none of that is in Ghoul Patrol, so getting points is meaningless. Lastly, there's keys that open doors, another mechanic that was in Zombies Ate My Neighbors, except here there are a few too many doors, with some leading to the same rooms. As a result, keys are abundant, to the point where it's possible to hold on to dozens of them. They were more precious in the previous games where you actually had to carefully consider what doors you should open, and even if you didn't have keys, you could just use a bazooka or monster potion to force them open. Unfortunately, there is no bazooka in Ghoul Patrol, but you can still use the Grim Reaper to bust open doors and breakable walls, which was another thing the bazooka was useful for before, but since only the Reaper and specific enemies or obstacles can break down walls, there's not very many of them here, downplaying another intricate design aspect from Zombies Ate My Neighbors. The level layouts suffer because of that, often being drowned out in winding areas that it ends with the people you need to save spread all across them. Just running through the levels as fast as you can does alleviate the tedium a little, stopping only to grab victims, shoot the occasional enemies in your way, and collect items. Some of which you can randomly find by going up against environment objects like desk drawers or closets to open them. Which, not surprisingly, is pretty much the exact same thing Zombies Ate My Neighbors had where you might find some more items if you're lucky, or take a hit from a purple monster if you're not. And those are still here in the sequel. Sure glad they kept that. There is one mysterious item that only shows up through these. A yellow... mug? I don't know what this is. It's not listed in the operations guide, and when I did try using it, it seemingly did nothing. I couldn't find any information on this, and it appears so rarely through RNG that I can't reliably find them again to see if it actually does anything. Although if I were to guess, this may be a scrapped item that can still have a small chance of appearing from the search spots, and using it simply doesn't do anything because the intended effect wasn't programmed in. If that's the case, then I suppose they couldn't iron everything out, and this completely useless unfished item snuck its way through. As much as I have ragged on this, I will give Goo Patrol props for how you find victims. The game guides you to them based on their cries for help that appear on screen. It's actually a bit more intuitive than the radar you had to toggle on in Zombies Ate My Neighbors, which only showed where victims are nearby. In Ghoul Patrol, you can easily figure out what direction you need to go to thanks to this. It also comes into play at the end of each level when there are no more people remaining. An exit door will appear and you need to get to it to complete the stage, adding a unnecessary step when Zombies Ate My Neighbors had the exit appear as soon as the last person was safe or killed. And even then, you didn't have to leave right away. You could take a risk and explore the level some more to find extra supplies, or just go right away before you take more damage. Add that to the list of downplaying good design elements from Zombies Ate My Neighbors. I know I keep stressing that everything is downplayed, but that's just how this sequel is. Even the levels and their themes keep that trend going. The idea of going through different times is fine enough, it's just that they are pretty conventional and go in a set order, as opposed to Zombies Ate My Neighbors having all sorts of different areas you didn't know what to expect next. In Ghoul Patrol, there's no sense of that. The first area is a metropolis, essentially city and building levels. Not too much to note other than watch out for cars, and in the hotel you can hop on beds and you can even press the B button to jump higher. Too bad this isn't utilized at all for this game. It could have been an extension from the Trampoline, er, Trampopoline. You said what now? Trampoline, that's it. The trampolines from Zombies Ate My Neighbors, which were the closest thing that game had to platforming. Here, this is a prime example of mispotential much like this whole game, really. After a few levels, you run into the first boss, this giant... uh... Robocop. Dead or alive, you are coming with me! By the way, all the bosses are like this. Every one of them is a big, flat, forward-facing spray that will try and run into you or attack from a distance with longer-range attacks and projectiles. Trying to beat them normally is a bit of a challenge since they take a lot of hits to destroy, or you can just do what I do and use the red potions for bosses to hack away at them. 
Admittedly, it is the same strategy I used for the bosses and zombies at my neighbors, because those were damaged sponges too. However, the bosses in Ghoul Patrol do at least change color slightly to show how close they are to dying, so that's another thing I'll give this game credit for. Once you defeat a boss, all the victims suddenly show up that you still need to collect, and you move on to the next set of levels in a new time zone. Oh, and when you do, your victim counter goes back up to 10, meaning you don't have to worry about losing people all that much. The stakes were higher in the last game because the only way you could get victims back was the aforementioned earning of 40,000 points. It made the sting of losing someone in that all the more painful, especially if they get taken out unfairly. So even if you lose a few victims beyond your control in Ghoul Patrol, it's pretty inconsequential in the long run when the number will just reset after every boss anyway. And sometimes you fight the next boss sooner than you expect. Like in the second area that takes place during the Ming Dynasty, too bad there's no warriors to help us out, where you do two stages and then you're at the boss already, followed by a pirate area with four stages before its boss. That's a little unbalanced, don't you think? Also, the third area is the only set of levels where you can swim, just watch out for Jaws, and a difference here is that the jump is actually how you get out of the water and is even a little more reliable than the sometimes fickle spots to get back on land and zombies at my neighbors. Wow, Google Troll, you're actually three for three on things that are actually better. Well, three against... Too many to count inferiorities. After defeating a ghost pirate, the next area is Medieval Times. No, the real Medieval Times. It's here that you will eventually encounter plenty of spike traps and the platforms I complained about earlier, but I have a way around this. What you may not know about the blue potions in both games is that they will let you walk across everything, including pits and ghoul patrol. So with those potions saved up, I can just go, screw your death platforms, I'm just gonna ghost walk over this crap. Is it cheese in the game? Absolutely, but if you're going to use the blue potions for something, it might as well be for that. One giant ghost knight slain later, and we're in the realm of ghosts and demons. Which is pretty much hell. Oh, what's this? Diagonal platforming or death pits now. Good thing I still have blue potions. And after that stage, it's the final boss. Yep, after leading up to this final area, there's only one stage of it. Now it's really unbalanced. And to make things even more anticlimactic, the same boss strategy still applies, and I slashed his ankles as a Green Reaper until he died. Even Dr. Tong and Zombies and My Neighbors put up more of a fight, and I had the freaking flamethrower. Once that's been taken care of, our two heroes are back in the library, glad that it's all over. Let's go home now, I'm hungry. What, did the dozens of chickens, I mean croissants not satisfy you, Zeke? And that's all Ghoul Patrol has to offer. Not including the five boss stages, there's only 13 levels which tries to compensate by making them longer and drag them out as a result. Sure, the 50 plus levels in Zombies Ate My Neighbors may seem intimidating at first, but they were all concise and went at a good pace. And you could even find bonus levels, which Ghoul Patrol has none of. There isn't even any secrets to find the password system that functions the same as the previous game. You get a password for every area clear, but still only have the starting weapon, three lives, and a medkit when you use one. Though you may not actually need them, as Ghoul Patrol is not quite as difficult as Zombies Ate My Neighbors, if only because it has way fewer levels and the potions are key to easy overcoming it. One notable feature of the password system this time is that there are codes that start you on individual stages, even on the bosses if you feel like doing a challenge. But that's the only other thing you can do with passwords. It's pretty disappointing knowing you can't find some kind of fun easter egg level like in Zombies Ate My Neighbors, but I suppose that's asking too much for something that wasn't made by the original developers. That is also made quite clear with the generic credits this game has when Zombies Ate My Neighbors was actually a level in itself through a mock-up of the LucasArts offices, rewarding the player for beating the game with a creative credit sequence. And the real kicker is that you don't even get to put your name in the high scoreboard after beating Ghoul Patrol. Granted, this is a minor thing to complain about, but it was sort of the cherry on top for beating the game before. It's like they either knew no one would really care about the high score, or they simply forgot to include that function at the very end. Oh boy, this game was a letdown. Now, to be fair, on its own, this is still a half-decent run-and-gun game. It's just that as a sequel to Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, it misses the mark considerably. I can see the effort here and there, the sprite work for a 1994 Super Nintendo game is nicely detailed, with a considerable amount of different enemies all throughout the time eras. However, a lot of the areas in presentation look pretty drab compared to the vibrant visuals and charms Zombies Ate My Neighbors had. A lot of the latter came from all the humorous names of every level, and in Ghoul Patrol, just some monster teeth as a transition, only showing something new when entering another zone. Another irksome thing is that the flat 2D nature of the bosses are very apparent, especially when they stretch and contort the sprite to try and make them more ghostly. It just looks silly to me. I'm also not a fan of Zeke and Julie's designs in Ghoul Patrol. The cartoonish nature of them in Zombies Ate My Neighbors has gone to become quite iconic. I even did my Zeke getup at a convention before and got a surprising amount of recognition for it. Although I couldn't really be bothered to do the hair again for this video, it was a bit of a pain in the ass. In Ghoul Patrol, I can see them being a little older here, but why this change of outfits? Zeke still has his three glasses, that now alternate colors when he runs towards the screen thanks to the very sprite technique they used. 
Oops. But what's with the trucker hat and jacket? He looks like Travis from Silent Hill Origins. Julie isn't as bad, but I miss the hat. Why give Zeke the hat instead? To me, she looks like a young Laura Croft with a green jacket. Wait a minute. What if Travis Grady and Laura Croft were actually Zeke and Julie from Ghoul Patrol all grown up? But that's just a theory. A lame theory. Alright, clickbait propositions aside, I will admit that the music isn't too bad either, being appropriate enough for the ghoulish nature of the game. The only faults I could give is that it tends to drone on a little and it isn't as memorable as Zombies Ate My Neighbors music. Well, that and the Oriental Sting that plays in the Dynasty levels track is pretty cliched. <laughs> A lot of sound effects are reused too, but that is to be expected and they at least change the pitch to differentiate them. Though strangely enough, the sound of changing items is also in Super Mario RPG. Coincidence? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, while I have played worse sequels, Ghoul Patrol isn't something I would strongly recommend either. It's a half-baked rehash of Zombies Every Neighbors, with most of the changes and additions being unnecessary or hindering the structure of a game like this rather than be advancements. I'd consider this a mediocre game overall that really wasn't worth turning into a sequel of a 16-bit gem. It's obvious this was made by different people that didn't quite get what made Zombies Ate My Neighbors good, though I won't knock them for trying. It did manage to get decent reviews, with GamePro and Electronic Gaming Monthly calling the game a worthy successor. I guess standards for sequels were lower back then. Needless to say, it didn't really sell well, and that's why copies are hard to come by. If you really want to play Ghoul Patrol, whether it's by yourself or with a friend as the co-op is the same, and you're willing to tolerate the game's issues, then I suggest the Wii Virtual Console version while you still can before March of next year. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than the same prices the game goes for in recent years. However, I would suggest just getting Zombies Ate My Neighbors. It's not as pricey to get a copy, but it's still much less expensive on the Virtual Console. So get it there before it's gone, because I'm not sure if Disney will bring this back to newer Virtual Consoles. And if you want a truer successor, there's Herx Adventures for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. While more of an action-adventure hack and slash, this was made by the Zombies at My Neighbors developers. It's also on the PlayStation 3 network for 6 bucks, so it's even cheaper there. But if you just want more Zombies at My Neighbors that isn't Ghoul cool Patrol, there is something a little more... unofficial. A ROM hack called, oh no, more Zombies at My Neighbors. Okay, that's a better title sequel than mine. Released in 2010, uh, about a week before the Virtual Console version of Ghoul Patrol, funnily enough. It was created by John Stanley Decker and his friend Matt PTR, which has 55 all-new custom levels, you always start with a random weapon and item, as bananas as a weapon that were originally in the main game before being replaced by popsicles apparently. Maybe the mug in Ghoul Patrol is like that too. There's soda machine enemies that lob soda bombs in front of them, and best of all, you can hold L and scroll back weapons and items. So if you're into ROM hacks, I go check this out. So that was Ghoul Patrol, a boss opportunity of a sequel. I can't really think of a good way to this video, so I'll see you all in the next What was that? Uh oh. Looks like the people that actually liked the game have arrived. Hey man, I liked this game when I was a kid. I played this on an emulator once and thought it was okay. You were just comparing it too much to Zombies Ate My Neighbors. It's a fine game on its own. I actually think Julia looks better in Ghoul Patrol. Although you're right about Zeke, his trucker outfit is stupid. So it's, it's come down to this, huh? Well, there's only one thing I can do. Respectfully disagree with them. Once I'm done with that, I'll see you all in the next video. Look, I'm sorry, but it just wasn't that good of a game. Hey, thanks for sticking with this to the end. If you haven't already, you can maybe subscribe and check out some other videos if you're interested. There's also a Twitter and Patreon to consider as well. And if you like Super Nintendo stuff, be sure to go see my fellow RCG buddy Well Unreal's review of the SNES Classic. Thanks for watching.